So whether you're watching the latest uh, Pixar movie, marveling at the visual effects in a superhero flick, or even trying to find the perfect animated emoji on your phone, animation is part of your life. Animation has been traditionally associated to film, but as we're gonna see, animation can encompass many different things. And we're gonna discover the roots of animation by discovering many of the amazing objects that are housed by McGill Library's Roar collection. One way of defining animation is to go back to the Latin root of the word, which means essentially to breathe life into something. And as you can see, th this goes way beyond film. After all, we've been telling stories about breathing life into objects for a very long time. It can be Mary Shelley's uh, Frankenstein, it could be Ovid's Metamorphoses. In all these stories, we have gods, men, scientists, breathing life into things. What do all these stories have in common? Animation. The history of animated pictures could go back as far as the Neolithic paintings, where the artists would use a torch to animate some of them. Some of them have different poses, phases of motion. One thing is for sure is if you're looking at a sculpture in movement or a picture of something moving, it activates the same parts of the brain that are associated to motion. Now, d during the uh, 19th century, many devices were invented. Uh, there wasn't one major uh, discovery. There were little instances. And let's go over some of the animation devices that were developed in the 19th century that led eventually to film and to film animation.